Welcome to another video on MVC. Uh, on the first video of this series, so all we did was show how to authorize a specific page. And on video two, um, uh, there's a few other things I will go over. But the main idea here is that we had a tab here that will allow us to um, to connect only users that are registered and as you can see here we were just practicing um, how could we make it make like a Twitter uh, application and all I did was right now just made a text box and then a button in a grid view to show the updates the, or the tweets sending so <clears throat> As you can see, it works pretty basic. Nothing fancy on this guy. You can customize it, but um, that's not the idea right now. So I'm gonna. I have the tweet uh, tab over here. So in the next video, I could show how to how, how to send tweets from here from this text box. Uh, but my hosting um, server doesn't have NBC yet, so I'm gonna have to swap. Or switch over to ASP so I can show how to do that and here's what the video 2 uh, covers as you can see here I have a, an action result but on this video I have I added <coughs> the accept verbs and what it did mean is that what kind of when the browser requests the page is gonna this one is gonna be in charge of the get request and this one which is similar same names but this one will be in charge of posting and as you can see it has an argument and what this is gonna do is this returns the regular view but this one will grab the message and post it into the database so one of the things that I like is using a data set because all you do is drop a line you initialize your data set adapter and with another line you do the insert and you insert whatever you want in this case I'm pulling the name from the ASPX uh, database user and a message very simple and this data adapter you can add it in the models so that's the idea to keep things separate and in the models you add your your access your database and as you can see I have two data tables this one I'm using it just to insert who entered that message and as you know um, the timestamp there's a timestamp in the table that's done by the database so I don't have to worry about it and I have this other data table this is for the grid view um, that you saw over here so I just try to keep it separate one for insert the message and who did it in another data table just to show uh, what they entered the last time so if we go back here this one this thing is pretty straightforward initialize your adapter and here I'm checking if it's no which is this guy or empty if it's not empty then I'll enter it into my data table or database and after that we're returning to the member which actually goes to here it doesn't go back here it goes here with a get uh, argument or attribute and that's for video 2 now I'm gonna go back and show you 
the view for member. And it's still the same. The only difference on this video is that I added a object data source and this guy so I just over here it's grabbing the this tape this data table this guy and populating this object and the grid view is the one that is using the object data source so pretty simple no code you know to write a code just to do that that's another way or another reason that I like using data sets because I can pull it easily from any other control and that's how <clears throat> I can show you this data without writing the code um, the next video I'm gonna have to swap to ASPX and web forms because like I said uh, current uh, host provider doesn't support MVC so I'll have to figure out that one out so stay tuned for the next video um, on how to tweet from your application and as you can see here I was working on that so the sample on the site uh, from tweet sharp but I'm gonna have to switch over to ASPX to show you or to continue and finish the how to tweet from your site thank you for watching